Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to use Sony Vegas Pro 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Those last few don't actually exist, but the first 13, 14, 15, all those are pretty much going to be covered today. Personally, I am going to be using just 13. All the future ones are basically identical with a few different kind of uh, little features that we honestly won't even get into this. This is going to be the exact absolute basics of how to use Sony Vegas Pro 13, 14, 15 in 2017. So without further ado, I'm pretty much just going to be going over the entire program, pretty much just giving you the ins and outs. And by the end of this video, it is my uh, pretty much goal for this video that you will have a understanding of Sony Vegas. And um, if you are a little bit confused on maybe how you would get Sony Vegas Pro, um, and you're actually thinking, oh shit, I, I, I want this program, this looks so easy to use, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to tell you how to get it for free, but I have actually heard that it's pretty easy to get programs for free on the internet. I've never done it, you know what I mean? I've just heard it's kind of easy. Uh, anyways, without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay, so here we are inside Sony Vegas Pro, and pretty much this is obviously the basic layout. You've got your project media right here, your explore tab right here, your transitions, video effects, media generators, of course your preview right here, uh, some various different um, master audios right here and stuff like that, but just to begin kind of um, sort of the editing process, what you would first of course be doing, I guess, when you're in a video editor, is importing a clip. So you can import a clip uh, kind of two ways, all right? You can go to the top right, go to file, down to import and media, and then just go ahead and select yourself something to import. For example, I just finished this project today. So I am going to import this new club movie that I made and pretty much just make a couple alterations to that and use that as the sample video for uh, today. But you can import by doing that way or you can just drag something from your desktop straight into uh, either your media, which is project media right there, or just straight into your timeline. So if you've imported, then we'll just go ahead and drag this straight onto our timeline. Now, um, obviously, we now have our clip right here. So once you drag it from the top, basically, right, uh, or if you drag it in straight from your desktop straight to your timeline, it will have instantly created two new layers, a video layer and an audio layer, obviously. Now, these are, of course, connected if you try and drag them because they are part of the same video clip. Now, if you do want to uh, split these guys up and actually make them separate from each other, then uh, you would do this two ways. Either one, just by pressing U, Simply the U key and then you will easily be able to just grab it and, and they won't be attached anymore. Or um, by undoing that quickly, you can right click, go to group and remove from. And then you will be able to split these up. So I could literally just take away the audio and we would just have the video right there. So if you were maybe uh, wanting to remove some background noise or something like that and put a different track over some footage, that would be kind of how you would do it. Now, um, I'm actually just going to bring that back just for the demonstration now. And you see how we only have two layers. If you decided you wanted to start putting stuff over the top of this, right, and starting to build kind of overlays, for example, you can see this is already an edited video, but there's stuff like text there, logos there, and all this stuff which uh, now that obviously it's being rendered um, is just all on one layer. But if you wanted to be actually adding that stuff, like this is a finished video, like I said, if you wanted to be adding these extra layers, you would simply right click down here or to the side of these guys, right click, and it will come up with insert audio track or insert video track. So if we wanted another video, of course, we would click insert video track. If we wanted another audio, of course, we would click insert audio and we would then get two extra tracks. Now, of course, this is your preview window window over here. You can uh, change the preview quality. Um, that doesn't change the output at the end. Obviously, this is just what you see it as here. For example, if we just go ahead and turn this down because this is going to be really loud and just play this for a sec. You can see that it is a, a little bit laggy because obviously this is just a playback preview window. When you actually render it, it will not be laggy or terrible quality or anything like that, um, assuming you get your render settings correct. Now, the next thing is, of course, if you are actually going to be rendering, and of course, to play, you simply press play over here or just the space bar, which is very, very simple. Okay, now say you wanted to render this particular clip right here. Uh, but you just wanted to render half of it. You see this guy right here, this yellow guy right here, that right there is your actual loop region, okay? And the loop region is how much 
is rendered. So say we just had the first 15 seconds actually done from this yellow to yellow loop region point when we actually went up here and went to render as um, then the final the final uh, video that was rendered would only be this 15 seconds. So basically anything that you highlight in these yellow bars right here, or if you double click on a clip, for example, then it automatically fills in the loop region to that particular um, area. So the loop region is basically, again, what is going to be rendered when you finally export it. Now, um, another cool thing, which is very, very easy is you see here uh, right now, this, this image just appears and the audio kind of just begins, right? That, that was a pretty good example, quite in your face, just begins. What if we wanted to have a nice, easy um, kind of fade in? Very, very, very simple. You simply go to the end of these clips right here, go to the top of the end, so the top left of the clip, or if we're doing it over here, the top right of the clip, um, and, and until your logo, uh, until your little cursor turns to that little guy right there, and simply drag. And that right there, you can do to audio, um, to video rather, and then also to audio. So now, instead of that just uh, kind of starting randomly, that's going to have a gradual fade in, even though the music is still really loud and annoying, I can't even lie. Um, but that's just going to slowly be fading in the audio, slowly be fading in the video. So a little bit smoother of an effect right there than kind of just having it just begin um, and actually kind of gradually eases you into it. And the cool thing about dragging the beginning to make it fade in is uh, this is kind of an easier way to do transitions as well. If you simply drag uh, a fade and add a fade to the beginning of your track, then you can simply go to transitions over here and select any of these transitions and simply drag it directly onto your fade and it will now turn that fade into a transition. The transition we've selected here is the flash. So it is going to fade into a flash, then fade out of the flash into our video clip and then come into um, all of this madness going on, basically. Now, moving onwards, if we would want to maybe split the video clips, right? I've already showed you how to separate the audio from the video. However, if you say you only want 15 seconds of this clip and then you want it to uh, cut right there, um, take a five second break and then come back in or something like that. I don't know, just basically, if you want to split the clip in half, this is how you do that. Simply press the S key and that will cut it directly wherever your little cursor is so if we wanted it at the 15 seconds obviously like I said we put it there and hold uh, and press S rather if we wanted it right down the middle we would press S right there and then simply you have two halves all right and you can obviously do this wherever you want as many times as you want if you wanted to remove the middle there and just have kind of a gap between these guys um, you can do all that by again just pressing the S key for split. So now I've talked about how you can actually fade in by going to the top right or the top left and simply dragging inwards and you can do this on both audio and video of course. Now here is how you um, change the opacity and change the audio level. So you've seen me already doing this actually over here just by turning it down but I didn't even really acknowledge it. So here is how you would change the opacity and the audio levels. You would simply go to this guy at the top, this 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 little kind of logo at the top that kind of turns to a lighter blue if you go over it or a darker blue if you're not on it and go up to that until your cursor turns to this little guy like that and simply drag down so obviously it now says opacity is zero opacity at the top is a hundred if you drag to the top it's going to be fully visible the bottom it's not going to be visible at all so um obviously find the balance that you want um, if you are obviously editing footage, you want it to be 100 opacity or else um, it's, it's people can't really see it. But obviously it depends if you want to be fading something in, maybe having something visible that's behind. Whatever you actually want to do if you just go to the top and drag down to opacity 0 or up to opacity 100. Same can be done with the audio. Down is uh, 0 decibels, top is, um, or down is minus like whatever decibels to make it not even there and the top is just a regular amount of decibels so you can actually hear the audio very 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 interesting now here actually is something i should have mentioned at the beginning and somehow i've just remembered this whenever you import a clip into sony vegas for some reason it has this built-in thing which is the biggest pain in the entire world which is that it resamples your videos meaning that when you render it if you don't do this one thing i'm going to show you in a sec your footage will look really weird and watery and wavy and it's just not 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 a nice look at all very unprofessional the way you stop this weird um effect from happening is as soon as you import any of your clips into sony vegas simply right click 
go to switches and disable resample. Um, when it's left on the smart resample, it is not a smart resample at all. In fact, it should be rebranded dumb motherfucking resample. Trust me, it looks disgusting, I swear. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely not something you want to be messing with at all. Leaving that on, um, I mean, render it if you want. If you haven't really used Sony Vegas, then have a look what it looks like because it's absolutely terrible. So try and remember to always go ahead and disable the resample of these clips or else they will just be looking kind of weird and unprofessional and glitchy and I really don't know why they put this this feature in here. I like it's a feature that makes no sense at all. Anyone I know who uses this program um, knows it's a fact that this is fucking just a terrible built-in feature um, and you have to basically change it. Um, but now I'm going to be giving off a uh, final kind of little little secret of how to actually save yourself a lot of time Oh, my bad. If you're editing YouTube videos and stuff like that, right? And that is the fact that a lot of images, if you're editing YouTube videos, or you might be using a lot of images, for example, um, that aren't going to be aspect ratio, okay? So, um, say you're editing a video about uh, badgers, right? So, I'm gonna go ahead and type in badgers. Is that even how you spell it? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. And we have this image right here, right? So, I'm gonna go ahead and just download this image real quick. And when I drag it into Sony Vegas, boom! Unfortunately, there were these black bars on either side. Now, this can be such a big pain. It, it, you might have to put it into Photoshop to change it and stuff like that to make it full aspect ratio. And for YouTube videos, you really don't want this. It's super amateur, not, not professional at all. Recently, I found a very, very easy fix for this. Go ahead and go to the pan and crop, which is right down here. Pan and crop, this is how you obviously uh, just pan and crop all your different images. Very, very, very simple. I'm going to undo these weird uh, glitches that I've just done. And I actually we accidentally just dragged that out of, uh, of the project. Um, but basically, yes, pan and crop is down there. Very, very simple. Um, go ahead to pan and crop. And to simply make your image aspect ratio, pan and crop, right click, and go to match aspect output. Match output aspect. That is the one, my bad, I messed it up for a sec. And boom, that will fit your entire project. And that is pretty much the final little cheat sheet that I could think of on how to use Sony Vegas Pro 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, <laughs> 19, 20 um, in 2017. Honestly, thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe for more video editing. Um, themed kind of videos like this, helping you to actually learn more about video editing, giving you weird kind of tutorials and stuff, and also showing you how you can make money from making videos, whether it be going out to record stuff, or whether it be just doing your post-production editing stuff on the computer. Thanks for watching, I've been Jack Chris, Jack Cole, have a nice day, and goodbye.